Hey guys, looking to clock out Dan Needles for another breakdown of the Ancient Megas Bride season two, episode number eight. Thank you guys for tuning in once again. I can't believe that there's actually only a month left before we flip over and get a new season of anime, which means I need to start compiling my list. I have had a brief look at summer. At the moment, I've only got one thing I'm breaking down on the channel, which is a problem. So I need to go back, maybe take a chance, take a gamble on a few shows that maybe not straight away from the bio or the blurb think that it sounds meh maybe but maybe give a chance to a few things so we'll have to see how it goes but i am gonna aim to have that video up in two weeks time and then two weeks after that you're gonna get my end of season review because we always put summer first and then we have the wrap up afterwards once upon a time we used to do it in one big video and that was so chunky so it works out a lot better if we just split the seasons can't wait to bring that to you guys thank you so much for your continued support we are still six noodlings away from becoming 700 so if you are not subscribed consider giving me a little sub and hopefully we can hit 700 by summer that is the goal so let's get straight to the breakdown. I've made some different notes. I've only got a page because I didn't have too much to say. I highlighted a few bits that I thought I really liked or I wanted to comment on a few little things that I thought worked really, really well. So the first thing I thought worked really well was in the greenhouse. I love the diffused lighting. Now you can tell it's a bright sunny day outside by the way that you've got overexposed windows. It's white, you can't really see out. You can't really make out any details. But I love the fact that as you get in closer to your depth of field, there's a hang basket of yellow flowers behind Elias and it's hazy as it would be because it's very very bright you can't really make it out because the edges aren't as defined whilst Elias himself has got nice soft lighting on his face really like those attention to details the next effect that I really like seeing is the moment in the forest where it goes all quiet all you can hear is nature then you can see the spirits or the neighbors all coming out when it's quiet i feel like if there ever were things like this once upon a time if you'd asked me if i believe in spirits and stuff i would have said yes a hundred percent if you ask me now i would probably just be like i eh, don't think so probably not i guess i've become more skeptical as i've aged if there were such things as neighbors and spirits i believe that the best way of hearing them, seeing them would be at the most quietest moments where nature is your background, away from the humdrum of the daily grind. I feel like going out into nature is perhaps the best way of connecting to them if they existed. Of course, you guys may have a differing opinion. Now, I was sadly wrong last week. I had it pinned that we were going to see some Kelpies. The word Kelpie is used, so I guess I am forgiven for my misunderstanding. But we do get a similar horse, very similar, where it would drag someone under and then eat them. Maybe that is actually the one that I'm thinking of from God of War. Because that one drags them under and I think it tries to attack them. But Kelpies are supposed to be friendly. So maybe there's a friendly version. But then there's the one that people mistake for a Kelpie. Get on the back and then they get eaten. Which is what I actually thought. Initially I actually thought they that Kelpies would drag you under and drown you. But maybe that's because the stories are so similar that they cross over. But it is really refreshing. Most of the time if you think Scotland. You either think Nessie or you think Kelpie. So it's nice to see a different bit of folklore being brought up into the limelight. Lucy commenting on Chise's eyes not looking human was actually weird because at that moment in time I was about to write a compliment about how beautiful the eyes look and the warm glow from the fire being reflected upon her face. It's weird how we both have different opinions Lucy but I still stand by it. I think the glow is really nice. I think the anime at times does suffer a little bit. Sometimes the animation is a bit sloppy or we do get that slideshow but there are moments in the anime which really glow and a lot of it is the way that they do lighting. Lighting, the way they fill up their environments, I think are really nice. Compositions as well. A few of these breakdowns this season, I've had to just take a snapshot and explain a few reasons why I think a composition really, really works. The anime does do that very, very well, but I do think it sometimes lacks a little bit. Maybe it's because of budget. I also see not many people are watching the anime in particular, which is quite sad. The second season is great, but I don't think it's living up to the hype of the first season, but it could just be the arc isn't the most exciting. I actually think Demon Slayer is suffering a little bit too with it not being as fun as last season. It is taking time to grow, so we'll have to see See if it actually flourishes into something a bit different we do get that definition between sorcerers and mages once again in our story when i do think lucy's tragedy 
is centered on sorcerers. Perhaps they are the reason why her family destroyed. I'd like to know a bit more about the differences between them, but the story is slowly building on this because I think sorcerers up until this point haven't really been touched upon because Elias, I think, he's mage. He's on that side of the scales. But it would be curious to know why Lucy is there in the first place. And a bit of me wants to say that it's because of the tragedy that she's trying to learn the magic that they know to maybe counter them or something or you know how you can know your enemy by getting quite close to them keep your enemies closer type thing i think that might be why she's there now health and safety would probably have an absolute field day when it comes to students catching random animals and eating them out in the wild nowadays we've got things like bird flu floating around some rabbits can have mixed mitosis but the slideshow for me was a bit of a meh moment of the episode and you do get a general idea of what's going on in a day it's fine but I always think slideshows are a little bit on the lazier side but I understand it's because we want to show passing of time this is the way that they're choosing to do it because it's meant to be chill that one is a me being picky essentially the next moment I absolutely adore it is the acoustic guitar we get during this moment absolutely love it because you can hear the finger picking on the strings and the tone of the guitar is really really nice I have recently been trying to put a bit more music breakdowns in my anime breakdowns so hopefully you guys can appreciate it or at least just let me have it because I absolutely love music in general music in anime to me it goes unnoticed at times so stuff like this is really nice for me now that is the first half the first half is very chill now the second half I felt went really quick but it is supposed to be a very contrast to the first half it's very very fast there's a lot going on and not clovey I haven't heard of them I did think it was a centaur ish I actually initially from last week's teaser thought it was the thing that the grandma had sent but I don't think it's the case but I do think it's a bit sus Elias suspects that Lucy wasn't attacked by the Naklavi but didn't quite catch it but he did has suspicions on whether it's actually the Naklavi that had caused her wounds I have a feeling that the book imagery that we saw the flipping of the pages was the gift that Flamira just got from her grandma when she went to visit her that then makes me wonder if the grandma is trying to kill Lucy and maybe she was the reason why there was a tragedy in the first place she's maybe the reason why she has no family and now the grandma's trying to get rid of her as well but I can't imagine why I haven't got enough information about any of these families I am stabbing around in the dark trying to get some theories together this is probably going to be blown open next week when we get more information this for now is my theory my vibe it's what my gut is telling me I like the tie-in at the end using the horse bringing it back around again using all the elements that you have introduced to have a resolve moment where Rion jumped on I got quite excited because I wanted to see a character like him expanded because up until this point he's been a character who wants to prove himself he wants to learn from Chise so nice to see him jumping on I have to say hats off to him being very brave which I liked I was hoping that we'd get to see him a bit more but I did think the way that everything kind of resolved was a bit underwhelming for me the horse just went cool okay you're off me now if you wanted to attack them you would have attacked them and then why did you help them in the first place anyway the next section where Chisei is underwater I always like underwater sequences for some reason it just vibes with me it did take me abnormally longer to work out where the face was in this image this image is amazing I love it but it took me a while to work out there's a face in the center of the screen. You guys can probably see it better than I can. But it's a very nice sequence. If anything, get from this episode, Chisei's arm. Quite cool to see it actually evolving into this like dragony hand type thing. Really helpful. And it's actually nice to see her being able to defend herself because Elias can't help this week. Only half present this week, which is hilarious because he's literally in half. I did think the Rion section should have been more. It just kind of felt a little bit underwhelming with him. But again, nice to see him included. Did kind of feel like he was just there for the sake of things. Fizzled out for me. I thought that the sequence could have been different. Maybe it's different in the actual material itself. I wasn't keen on Chisei's hair before. I This probably might grow on me, but I'm not keen on it. It does actually remind me of... Tomo is a girl. Last season, she does look a little bit like her. She's got the green eyes, the red hair, the little bit tomboyish. I guess maybe they're taking a leaf out of each other's books. Don't have much to say on that in particular. But Elias the hairdryer was absolutely hilarious. I did like that moment. It made me smile. It was quite novel. That is really all I've got to say on today's episode. There wasn't too much for me to dive into. These episodes, thankfully, are a little bit light compared to the other animes I'm breaking down. We will have to see what happens next week. The teacher was absent. I was like, okay, cool. You're absent. Aren't you supposed to be taking care of these guys? I feel like someone should have been awake looking after the group, even if it is nighttime doing like a watch type thing. 
Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you're having a great week and you've got a cool weekend ahead of you. It's getting quite warm over here now, so I am enjoying life because it's a lot warmer. However, I am suffering from extreme hay fevers. Downside of when it gets warm, I have to suffer completely. Thankfully, I don't sound too bad in these recordings, but you guys may disagree. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Look after yourselves. I will see you guys again next week. Bye-bye, guys.